Well, welcome back YouTubers. Here's my cement mixer. I bought this at an auction. The auctioneer started off at 50 and nobody bid, so we went down to 5. Somebody bid at 5, somebody bid at 8, and I bid at 10. And then there was silence. I got this cement mixer for £10. You can see it's quite badly dented. Somebody's taken a hammer to it at some point to try to remove the cement. I suppose it's stuck on the inside. Um, there was no way I could tell whether it was working or not. It was sold as is. There was a lot of oil running down here. It's coming out of the bearing, which I didn't think was particularly good news. Um, but I've cleaned all that up. Around the back there was some plastic covers which I've removed. What you can see here is the gearbox and the belt. The belt looks like it's in good shape. Um, there was oil all over this. Largely, I think, not because it was leaking, because I've cleaned it up and it looks fine. Uh, largely because um, whoever was filling it up at the top here over the years was just pouring it probably from a large container and it was just pouring everywhere. Um, it was overfilled. There's two caps here. This one here represents the oil fill line. So you, the way I understand it, you take this out you fill it from here and when the oil starts to come out of here, you just fill it slowly, once it starts to come out of here you've got enough oil in it so you just put your cap back, put this cap back and you're filled at the right level. Now what I noticed is when I took this cap out oil was pouring out which makes me think it was filled all the way to the top which probably is the reason why oil was coming out of the bearing at the front, it was just basically submerged in oil. So I hope that's uh, cleared up the problem. Now when I got it, it was extremely dirty as I said before. The back covers here were absolutely filthy and there was a switch which I'll show you in a second. Here's the switch. Uh, this switch didn't work. I plugged it in and it didn't work. Largely I think because these buttons here would not go all the way down. There was so much dirt underneath here, basically all over this was this filthy, that it was preventing the buttons from going down. Those buttons operate this switch here. Um, they push on the terminals here and here, turn it on, turn it off, and without that being engaged the thing wouldn't run. So um, I cleaned this up, plugged it in. This is a 110 mixer as you probably noticed by the plug there and uh, what I got out of it was a sort of grunting sound which was the motor trying to start so at that point I assumed that the capacitor that uh, gives the motor a bit of a power surge to get it started uh, was 40. Uh, here you can see the motor it looks like it's in fairly good shape um, it has cement dust on the fan and a bit of rust on the top here, but by and large it looks all right. There are three wires here that connected to the original capacitor, which is this big beast here, which you can see is quite rusty. The terminals are quite rusty. Um, I'm going to replace that. There's no point in worrying about this. I think it's the original one, judging by the size of it. So I got this one on eBay. Um, it's a 60 UF, plus or minus 5%. This is a 450 volt capacity. I think the other one is 250, 50 to 60 hertz, which basically means I think it works in the States and the UK. Um, so there were three wires. There's two blue, a thin one and a thick one, and a brown wire. So before I took that off, I um, took some pictures of it, so I'll make sure that the wires go back in the same place. And then here are three additional wires that run to the switch. So that's basically it. There's not a lot to this. Now over here, these are the plastic coverings that keep the water off the motor so that this can be stored and used outside. Uh, they were also completely covered in oil. I've given those a good clean. I've got a stiff nylon brush, good quality stiff one, and I just use washing up liquid which is fine for cutting through grease uh, if you use it in a concentrated way. So it's a cheap way of doing it, there's no need to use any fancy degreasers. A little bit of warm water, washing up liquid, stiff brush, and that will clean that up no problem. Uh, I've already mentioned that I did 
all this, clean that up, clean the inside up. This does have a seal on the back, stop the rain from going in, and a rubber seal that goes around here, um, which is actually on the lid. There's a little rubber seal there, stop that from letting water in. So I suspect it will work, um, I hope so. I haven't replaced the oil. I'm going to see if it works first. If it does work, then I'm going to give it an oil change with some new oil. It's a 90 weight oil for these things. Um, that runs about 10 pounds, so I didn't think there's much point in buying oil if it doesn't work, because at this point, if it doesn't start up, it's probably the motor. And if the motor's gone, then you're looking into a much more expensive repair, in which case this cement mixer might just become scrap. The bolt on the bottom of the capacitor goes through the hole, then you put the lock washer on, then the knot. See there I've put the capacitor in so you can still read the values of the capacitor. So having a quick check on my phone, there's no reason not to take photos, it makes things so much simpler. What I see is that the two blue wires go on one side of this line, both the capacitors have a dividing line, so they go side by side. Um, the thicker one goes at the back. Thinner one closer to the front, and then the brown one is basically on this side with the thick one at the back. So that's the way the capacitor was set up. The switch has to be mounted to the plastic cover. Um, this is done from the inside of the cover with four screws that clamp onto the box. It goes this way with the plug to the right. So the first thing I'm going to do is to screw that from the back on, and then these wires can be fed through and connected to the switch which can then be installed back in the box um, and then it can be turned on and off. At this point though I'll probably fix this properly um, just so that everything's secure. I kept everything in a box when I took it out so I wouldn't lose anything. I use Q-tips which you can see here to clean all the electrical connections. Um, all these here, I took all these off, sprayed it with a contact cleaner, used a Q-tip and put them all back. So I know all these connections are good, there won't be any problem there. Uh, basically cleaned this up as much as I could, did the same with these. These connect to the plug socket, made sure that these were clean as well and the prongs on the plug socket were also clean. So we've got four screws. Tighten this up, get a good waterproof seal. Don't want any water in with the electrics, that wouldn't be good. So you've got a good seal around the box here. This just slips on, this metal work here goes into the groove. And there is a rubber gasket that runs around here sure that that's installed. Just have to tuck in on the inside of the pipe, a little bit fiddly. And the edge goes around the metalwork. And if you've done that right, you should be lined up here with two holes. So you do the bolt through the washer, through the shield or the hood. I have a small wrench and a pair of pliers. So I'm going to grip the knot on the back, the pliers, and just tighten this 
this up. It doesn't have to be over tight, it's just to snug it up. I think they could have put another nut and bolt here, I think would have gone a long way to making this fit better, but they didn't. Now with your switch oriented in this direction, with the part that's activated by the buttons to the right, you have four open terminals. Now you don't use the fourth one, counting from the right to the left, you use the first, second and the third. And the wires coming out from the motor are black, brown and white. And the way this has to work is that the brown one goes on the right, the white one goes in position 3, counting 1, 2, 3, and the black one goes in between. It's a little bit fiddly, so I'm going to have to fit it sort of upside down. Okay, so looking at this again from the top, the switch is on, the, on this side here. So you've got the brown wire coming into the right hand side, the black into the middle, the white into the third space counting from the right. This one here is left empty. Now you should have two wires that come off of the um, switch with these round tips. I'll just close those up a little bit, you can do that with your fingers. And they are going to clamp onto the two smallest prongs of the plug. Okay, so looking at the plug, you've got three prongs. You've got a fat one, which is on its own, it's sort of this one here. You can just check where they are. Then you've got two more. And looking from the back, you've got to the left hand side of the big one and to the right hand side. And looking at the switch, you've got one wire that comes off the furthest left terminal. It also has two wires connected to that terminal. One runs to the end, and the other one is going to run to the left hand as you're looking at it, the terminal of the plug. You'll line that up and push it. Push it on. It's a little bit fiddly. Push it all the way. It sort of just disappears inside the plastic. It goes inside the yellow plastic, it sort of surrounds the prong and pushes all the way into the plastic. And the end of the prong should come to the end of the terminal. And then the other one goes to the other of the two smaller prongs. And you push that all the way in. So that's all the connections. And then you orient the switch so that the bit that is pushed, the on-off section, this is on and this is off, they go to the top. So I'm putting those four screws in, just doing them lightly to start with. You have to check to make sure your lid has the little gasket running around to keep the water out. Now if you haven't noticed already these two switches are exposed to the elements and there's two pillars here which have holes at the top which presumably took some kind of fit screw fitting or something. There would have been a plastic or a soft kind of rubberized or silicone cover that went over here that you could still push the buttons on and off through the through the silicone or whatever it would have been made of. However that's been removed which is why there was so much dirt gathered around the switches which prevented these switches from being switched on and off. Right, so at this point I think the machine can be tested um, and if it works, which I hope it will, then I'll put the other cover plate on. This is um, basically like a plug 
like this so you have to attach a socket, a 110 socket to this end and then the other end of the cable should have a plug on it which then plugs into your 110 transformer. You can see quite clearly it says 110 volt transformer must be used with this machine. I've got a fairly short 110 volt uh, extension. And at this end you can see the socket is plugged into the cement mixer. Um, this cap, it's alright, it's not really in the way, I can still get to the switches. Okay, so I'm going to switch it on. I hope it works, um, I really don't know yet, but uh, if I've done everything correctly it should do. Fingers crossed. Well, 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 look at that. So, my 10 pound cement mixer, it needed a new start capacitor, which cost about 780. It needed to be thoroughly cleaned. Um, it's going to need some oil. I've decided I'm going to uh, change the oil, give it a, a good fresh start. The oil will be about 10 pounds. So we're looking at about 27, 28 pounds all in for a fully serviced, fully functional cement mixer which should serve me for many years. You can see the motor turning there. It's a nice smooth and quiet operation. It's looking very good. So the last thing that remains to be done is to put this on. Once again, it just slips over the metal frame. This has two bolts, just like the previous cover. So, put the bolt through. Okay, so the socket I'm using on this is a 1332nd imperial size. It seems to work. I'm sure there's a metric equivalent. Anyway, it does the job. I'm holding the bolt with the adjustable wrench and I'm using the socket on the other side just to get it tight. So, that's that. I'm slightly concerned that this isn't covered. I might see if I can find a spare um, a part for this. I mean, there's probably a place that sells spares. Um, there's one more nut, so I'm not going to forget. The one I didn't put in earlier, which is this one here. Just going to turn it on one more time. It's lovely and quiet. Obviously, it doesn't have cement in it. All the gravel and the cement and the water will make a lot of noise when that's in there. Seems to me like it's working really good. It's certainly worth the money. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope there's been something in this that um, has inspired you to, to buy your own cement mixer from an auction. There's not much that can go wrong with them, really.